me. I can hear you. Okay, okay. So I think almost 14 person joined. I am I am sure that our Bangladeshi participant uh, they will not be able to join because the internet is very slow in Bangladesh. Uh, fortunately, I'm in Penang now, so I can join. But other colleagues from Bangladesh, it's very difficult for them to join because of the slow internet. Uh, so, Mariana, can we start, or we, uh, do we need to wait, uh, you know, for two or three minutes? I think almost. I, I we think have uh, I think we we may slowly start by welcoming everybody to this uh, session of the the Delta Talks. It's it's number twelve already in in our series. And uh, so we, we just heard that uh, a few people cannot join, unfortunately, because of the, the internet connections. There are also some other reasons over here, as uh, some people are on holiday. <laughs> so that is also from our side. Not all people uh, are attending. But uh, I'm happy that the room is uh, getting fuller and fuller. Well, we are now 18, so that is already a nice number of uh, people. And we have um, we have three people today who present, and I'm wondering whether it is a sequence of the people that we got, or whether one is talking for the others. So uh, I'm curious to hear who will talk today about understanding the diet of the Cambodia Mekong Delta. So an interesting topic, and I'm going to let people in. Yeah, and. Um, I, As no, I don't no, know how to pronounce the names, maybe you can introduce the people. <laughs> yeah, um, I think you know our presenters can introduce themselves, but I know that three people will present. You know, uh, and basically, uh, this presentation is from the Asian Mega Delta Initiative. You know, that is a work package to nutrition sensitive delta ecosystem. So this is a work. Uh, you know, um, uh, we uh, Asian Mega Delta. With partnership with uh, Cambodian Development Research Institute, World uh, Vegetable Center, and World Fish did these studies together. So we have three presenters: one from World Fish, one from uh, World Vegetable Center, and another uh, person from uh, Cambodian Development Research Institute. So I would now I would like to request the presenters to introduce themselves and 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 present uh, uh, their their findings or. Uh, the, uh, the presentation. So, uh, uh, first, I do not know who will be the first. I yeah, think, uh, uh, Priyam, you are the first I, one. Yes, I am the first. Yes, good afternoon, everyone from Cambodia. Uh, my name is Kiel P. Rung. I'm working as a research associate in Cambodia Development Research Institute in the Center for Policy Research for Agriculture and Rural Development. And for uh, today, I would like to present about the accessing of uh, food consumption uh, in Cambodia. So, uh, okay, mm -hmm. may you have to. Uh, uh, I I cannot see the slide. Sh can you see? Yeah, you're slide? not yet. Uh, you you're starting oh. to share. And for the people, please, oh. you can already write also comments into the chat. So we will have the discussion afterwards. Mm -hmm. Okay. And maybe first ones in Britain. So we see the presentation in presentation mode. Thanks. Yes, and I am the first one who will uh, present about the assessing of change in household food consumption in Cambodia. And and uh, so uh, I would like to continue my presentation. Then we will uh, I will give the floor to another one when I finish my presentation. And let me see that. And for uh. For this study, uh, the assessing of uh, food chain in Cambodia and the objective of this study, we want to examine how the food consumption uh, in Cambodia or nutrition that vary across the social groups such as the rural, urban, uh, gender, male and female, and uh, also the different also, uh, how, uh, the people who are in, uh, for example, in Phnom Penh or in 
plant area or mountainous area or the lake sap area, how they have access to the food or how they uh, uh, consume the food. And also we access to the factor that uh, affecting the food consumption uh, in the broad pictures of uh, Cambodia also. And from this study, we use the Cambodia Social Development, uh, Social Economic Survey, uh, uh, from 24 to uh, 20, uh, 21. And, uh, because of we want to analyze the trend, the over time that, uh, so we select, uh, some years of the Cambodia Social Economic Survey. Uh, such as 2004, 2009, 2014, 2017, 2019, and 20, and also the, the latest one is 2021. And, uh, so, uh, please move to the first slide. Yes, uh, for this one, uh, I would like to, uh, present about the share of the uh, food expenditure in, uh, the household during the seven day. And we can see that, uh, for uh, this slide, it indicates about the uh, the proportion how the uh, household they allocate their budget uh, for the food, and also it uh, shows about the priority need that people uh, for spending in their family. And we can see that it is uh, increasing since 2004 uh, until 2021. However, it is uh, it, uh, decreased about. Uh, 10% from 2004 and uh, 2021. And uh, please move. Yes, um, and uh, there are uh, more than 50 uh, food uh, items in for uh, because he says Cambodian Social Economy Survey. So uh, we have uh, classified into uh, 12, uh, 11 uh, our food group. Uh, uh, and as we can see that uh, among all the food group, uh, most of the household, uh, it is around, uh, 30, more than, uh, 30 percent that, uh, people spend their budget, uh, on, uh, animal protein, which is the, uh, contribute the high percent among all other, uh, food group. And it is not about, uh, uh, yeah, I, I want to show, uh, so, but also, uh, re related with, uh, non-alcoholic beverage, which include in sugar drink, energy drink, and salt drink. Also, it is also increasing, uh, from, uh, year to year. And, uh, I just remark about it because it is, uh, the important, uh, uh issue that, uh, happen, uh, for, uh, currently in, uh, our Cambodia because of the people, uh, consume more with uh, uh, non-alcoholic uh, non uh, beverage. So can you move to another one? Uh, yes, uh, for this slide, which I, I just want to uh, uh, show about uh, the compares about the uh, real value which we use constant uh, price in 2006. So we can see that uh, the price or expenditure, uh, food uh, expenditure is increasing until uh, 2019. However, it is decreased in 2021, which it refer to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic, which uh, the, the people uh, uh, reduce their expenditure uh, with the food consumption. It indicates that uh, for our uh, information. So uh, please move to another one. Uh, for this one, Regarding to the, uh, the lifestyle of the people who are uh, living, uh, currently, so we can see that, uh, there is, uh, the food taken away, which including the, uh, the food that they have at restaurant or food vendor, uh, along the street. And we can see that in urban, in, in Trumpin have the high percentage, uh, among, uh, the other group. So, however, uh, their percentage is decreased during 2021. Uh, 20, and we can see that in 2019, uh, it is still high because it decades about uh, before the COVID-19 pandemic. And we can see that after the COVID pandemic, the percentage also is decreased. And uh, I would like to move to the uh, average of uh, food consumption. For, uh, for this slide, uh, 
I just want to show about a uh, number of the day that uh, the people uh, they consume uh, the main food group. As we can see that uh, staples and uh, sugar or condiment um, that uh, most of uh, they consume uh, almost the seven day during a week. So, uh, so both group are the fundamental uh, as uh, the food group. Okay, so move to another one. And uh, for uh, this one, uh, this slide it shows about the uh, food diversification. We can see that the people uh, in Cambodia they have uh, more than a six group of uh, food that they uh, consume in seven day. And we can see that the people uh, in the rural they consume. Uh, more uh, diversified, uh, it means that uh, higher than the people in urban because of uh, they can uh, uh, promote or they can uh, grow uh, in their area so they can uh, find more uh, uh, diversify out uh, the food. So uh, that is all from my uh, presentation that I just saw the pattern, some pattern of the uh, food that uh, people uh, consume by uh, using the national data and now I would like to give floor to uh, Sokje she will uh, that she will present about the rural food consumption yes please thank you uh, everyone now I would like to continue the presentation with uh, our result on uh, rural livelihood and food consumption survey that um, World Feast Cambodia in collaboration with uh, Royal University of uh, Phnom Penh um, collected the data in uh, May and June 2023. This um, survey was done uh, in an attempt to um, in, in an attempt to complement what uh, CDI uh, is doing regarding using the national uh, representative data. But uh, for this uh, survey, we capture the area and the the AMD, um, the five provinces and then and the AMD in Cambodia. However, it, it has no purpose to generalize the whole AMD, uh, AMD as a whole because in our selection framework was um, to select different uh, topography uh, area of the uh, of the region like the uh, rice intensive cultivation um, versus the um, Subsistence farming, um, households, something like this. So, uh, it somehow will, uh, would like to build this uh, update on the rural livelihood in the uh, AMD area. Um, for the overall uh, five provinces, uh, we interview uh, 100 households per province, and the survey uh, worked basically on uh, agricultural production, detail on consumption, which is a very more detailed than social economic survey that we list down um, around 100 food items as well as the detailed item of uh, food away from home. And now I would like to uh, uh, give you an uh, overview of our finding. So in, in this uh, slide, uh, I would like to show like it's a confirm and complement to what um, the national um, data provide uh, show us that uh, basically um, in terms of uh, daily consumption, people consume like more, more of their, 100% of their consumption is basic, basically rice, starchy, uh, 34%, and vegetable around 20%, and uh, animal source protein like uh, fish and meat uh, around 18%. In terms of a uh, share of value for the per day, equivalent per day in, uh, in uh, a monetary term that uh, we use the MW that they reported in terms of purchase uh, plus the imputed value of unpurchased, for example, gifted or the self reuse. So in in, uh, in average, um, the food consumption per adult equivalent per day is around 2.5 uh, US dollar per day that comprise of like 25% from meat, 14% um, uh, from fish and Beverage plus food away from home is around 23%. Um, for, uh, in, this, uh, in this slide, I would like to show about the share between um, the purchase versus the own produce. How we see a rural area 
Cambodia in Cambodia currently uh, consume their food. So um, most of the time, people um, protest all of these uh, food group for uh, consumption, uh, except two main items is uh, rice and also fruit. So um, rice and fruit is somehow a, a tradition that people grow rice for their consumption as well as for sale and for fruit, uh, people normally don't really buy fruit for consumption, but they consume those that they grow around their house. And for this slide, um, it's about the food acquisition, like how uh, in the past month, how people, they are people, um, not how it's like, share of household that they purchase food. So all of this show that um, this Based on this food group, people mostly purchase like uh, protein source, um, animal source, protein through uh, vegetable, fish, condiment, sugar, or etc. And the, the low share is right, but uh, also food away from home around 30% or 35% of, of uh, the people also purchase some food away from home. Uh, for this slide, uh, we, uh, we would like to show about the source of the most frequent purchased food that uh, the household reported that they had purchased. So uh, for this, we, we see that um, the main source of the that people acquire food are uh, village market, the local market nearby their home, and also a mobile vendor that are going from house to house selling different kinds of food. And um, in our survey, we also trying to catch uh, to touch on a climate shock. So in here, from our data, around 80% of the household they report that they experienced at least one of the climate shock in the past 20, uh, past two years. Um, and the major shock that they experienced are uh, basically drought and flood. And uh, out of the affected household. 50% of them reported different severity of the impact on their household consumption. And in this slide, uh, we can see that um, the, the two major uh, climate shock, drought and flood, has severely affected on their household consumption, while the other, like extremely high temperature and strong wind, they are not really affected on the household consumption. So this is... a uh, all for the briefly the result from our rural survey. And so now I would like to give the floor to Liz uh, to present her early, uh, study. Thank you. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Liz Dukowski with the World Vegetable Center, um, and now I am presenting on the rural food vendors in the Mekong Delta, um, a case study we did in Cambodia. Uh, next slide, please. I almost did it myself. Um, so a little bit of background. Uh, this survey was done to support the household survey that Sakin just explained um, in order to help but better understand the rural food environments in the same areas where we collected the household data. And so we were able to interview 212 food vendors um, in June 2023, so the same time that the household survey was going on, and we used mixed methods, and given that these are informal vendors, we had to rely on convenient random sampling. Next slide. And we categorized the vendors into three different types. There are stationary vendors, which are at a fixed location. Usually this is um, a shop that's attached to their home, although sometimes it's not their home, but it's a fixed location, it's a building, and this was just over half of our sample. Then there are mobile vendors who are on motorcycles, bicycles, or even on foot, and they are consistently moving, and they're really only stopping when they make a sale, which can prove difficult for data collection. And this was just over a third of our sample. And lastly, we categorized semi-mobile vendors. And so these vendors are also on a motorbike or some sort of transportation, um, but they don't consistently move. They essentially move from one place, stay there for a period of time, then they may move somewhere else. You know, they go to the school at a certain time of day, they go to the commune at a different type of day, and this was about 12% of our sample. 
the vendors were 76% female. However, the one difference was for mobile vendors, just over half of them were male. Um, we're not sure why that is yet, but that was just an interesting difference. They're you know, about 42 years old, and most of them report that this is their primary occupation and that they've been selling food for about seven years. And there was no significant difference in the time that they had been selling food between the different types of vendors. So then it goes on to what type of food were they selling? And we selected four different categories. Um, so the first one is full meal. So, you know, a soup, some sort of rice dish, grilled meats, anything that you would consider an, uh, an entire meal. Uh, and just over a third of the vendors sold this. Then there's unprocessed food. So raw vegetables, fresh fruit, um, raw meat, fresh fish, those are all unprocessed. And this was the most commonly sold category. Then there's traditionally processed foods, which is a very difficult category and has caused lots of discussion. But essentially this category is foods that are minimally processed. So in Cambodia, salted or dried meats, fish are very common or fermented uh, vegetables or fermented fish. So it's essentially something that's been minimally processed to help extend the shelf life a little bit, but it's not gonna make something shelf stable. And lastly, there's the ultra processed foods. So ice creams, sweets, energy drinks, um, ultra processed meats like meatballs or some crab sticks, uh, hot dogs, those types of things, uh, chips in packages. And this was the second most common sold food item. And of course, vendors can sell more than one food group. And 57% of our sample did, they sold more than one type of food. And one thing I just wanted to note was, so of the 63% that sold unprocessed food, so they're selling healthy foods, 60% of those vendors are, are also selling ultra processed foods. So there's easy access to healthy food, but also easy access uh, to unhealthy food from the same vendor. Next slide. And these graphs just give a little more description of what type of vendor is selling what. On the left-hand side is the number of food categories sold by each type of vendor. And as you would expect with our vendor types, the stationary vendors tend to sell more variety of the categories of food because they don't have to move um, their, their product around. And, and mobile vendors are selling the least variety of food types um, because they have to continue to move around. And on the right-hand side, it shows the share of each type of vendor, and what um, percentage was selling what type of food groups. And every type of vendor, the most common type of food group sold was unprocessed, so those, those fresh vegetables, fruits, meats, fish. And the second most common type was ultra-processed. And this is just an interesting pattern that that seems to hold in the sample. Next. Um, so the second half of the survey was uh, qualitative questions and uh, it was optional, although only a few vendors um, opted out of this because the entire survey didn't take very long. And so we asked them, what is their most popular item that they sold? And this was an open-ended question. And then we went back and categorized it. And so in the full sample, the most commonly sold item was sweets and ultra processed foods. Um, and the second most common was meals or cooked meat. Um, yeah, we put those two together because they were both pretty common. Um, for stationary vendors, the most commonly sold was meal, uh, meals or cooked meats. And then the second, second place was sweets or ultra processed. So these two categories seem to be um, most popular. However, semi-mobile was a little bit different because um, fruits and vegetables was tied with the traditional foods. And so these tra the traditional foods category is what I mentioned before about those minimally processed food items. And that also includes some traditional desserts because again, this was an open-ended question. So we had a lot more responses that broader than what our food groups were. So um, that's what the, the traditional foods include. And mobile vendors, 
uh, the ultra processed foods and sweets were tied with the traditional foods as well. Next slide. We asked each vendor what was the average cost per transaction from their customers. So, you know, we asked them to think about an average day of sales, how much were people spending per transaction? And there is not a huge difference, um, but it's about $2.21 per transaction uh, for the stationary vendors and up to $2.60 for the semi-mobile vendors. And we also were able to collect some prices about the most common food items sold and raw meat and eggs and raw fish and seafood were the most expensive foods. Um, of course, but these are per kilogram and not necessarily everyone is bought, always buying an entire kilogram, but it is important to know that the healthy nutritious foods are expensive um, and the ultra processed and the traditional snacks were about 13 cents per unit. And given the variety of what people said, you know, unit is different for everything, but it's still just an interesting comparison um, on that price difference. We also asked the vendors, how have their sales and their business changed over the last five years? Stationary vendors reported lower sales, higher cost of products, and more competition. Semi-mobile vendors reported lower sales, and mobile vendors reported higher sales, but more competition. Um, and a few vendors of each type also said that selling was better during the pandemic. Um, a lot of, since the pandemic, yeah, people don't have much money. A lot of vendors reported that people don't have money to buy food from them. Next. So just a quick summary of all three presentations you've seen today. So from the trends over time from the national data, we saw that the food groups consumed in the most recent years are decreasing. You know, from the last 20 years, they started increasing at first, but the last few years, the number of food groups is decreasing. And the urban and rural households, we saw a convergence, which is interesting because this is, um, some evidence has been found in other countries as well that the diets between urban and rural households are converging and are less different than we thought they once were. Um, we also saw that over time, food away from home increased, but most recently uh, it decreased. And while this is likely due to COVID, it would be great if there was another data set um, to see if it has bounced back or to see um, most recently since 2021 where that food away from home is at the national level. And then from our AMD data, our primary data that we collected last June, we see a high share of purchased food especially in animal source foods, which are high in nutrients and proteins, but they're also very expensive. Um, and these households, a lot of them have experienced climate shocks, which of course will affect their livelihoods. And we also find that mobile vendors are an important source for households to access food, but it can be a double-edged sword. As I mentioned, these vendors can provide healthy options of fruits, vegetables, and fresh meats, but they also have inexpensive ultra processed foods. And I want to note that this is especially important in uh, rural Cambodia, because a lot of what we saw in the rural households was often their grandparents home with grandchildren. And so these mobile vendors, as those grandparents age, these mobile vendors really become more important in giving them access to food, but then it gives children access to unhealthy foods. And so, I think the mobile vendors are a really important entry points to help improve um, some diets. Next. And just some policy implications and options for future research. On the consumption side, there's a need to implement policies that can help regulate the unhealthy foods and promote um, affordable and nutritious options. But this needs to be paired with the knowledge about the risks of overconsumption and consumption of fats and sugars and the importance of fruits and vegetables. And these types of um, policies could be tested with an intervention either at a school level or even a village level if there was some sort of unit that was willing to, you know, implement to regulate unhealthy foods and promote healthy foods and see what actually can work. Also for consumption, there's a need to better understand the impact of climate change on consumption because besides just climate change affecting 
yield, which then affects income. Um, you know, climate change is also changing the chemistry of the crops. So there's less nutrient in the crops. And we don't know to what extent that's happening yet. So there's a lot, there's a lot to study on how climate change affects consumption still. And on the production side, there's a need to strengthen producer groups and promote um, home gardens to improve diet diversity and just improve di production diversity to improve to increase incomes. But this also needs help from climate resilient agriculture in order for households to sustain their production. And again, something like this could be tested at a small scale village or commune level um, as an intervention before um, scaling up. And so to figure out what can work and what is sustainable for the Cambodian people. And thank you. Thank you, Liz, and the team for the nice presentation. Uh, now the floor is open for the question. Mark. We have a first question in Britain. Talib, Yada, how does rice fish systems contribute to dietary diversity and nutritional outcomes, particularly for vulnerable populations? For whom is this question, Talib? Or is this, you can also ask the, the presenters to choose. Uh, probably for the first and the second presenter. Yes, thank you, uh, Khalid, for the question. And uh, uh, regarding to the rice feed system, it's, uh, it is kind of combined source of uh, right, uh, staple food, uh, especially rice. And so it will uh, provide uh, the salt for, for the main uh, meal that people did in their household. And for the fish, it will uh, provide the uh, protein rich food, which is contribute to the uh, nutritional outcome uh, if the rice feed system uh, is working well uh, in our country, especially for the people who are uh, vulnerable groups such as uh, the, the uh, people with ID poor or the people in the rural area? Uh, from our AMD data, um, actually from the production side, we're trying to um, uh, uh, to uh, integrate different farming systems like monocrop, uh, uh, multiple purpose uh, farm, something like this, to link with the consumption. And now I'm still trying to um, test whether there is a correlation causation regarding this different type of um, farm diversification related to their dietary diversity or their nutrition outcome. So it's still in the process of uh, driving the model. And it's also a really good uh, research question that you ask. There, there is a related question from does increased diversity in farming systems translate to increased dietary diversity? Is there correlations? Question from Katie. Katie, please. I, I can try to respond from my data. Actually, I tested the correlation uh, first, but um, maybe because our data has a, a really low diversification um, data. So we haven't seen any um, a strong correlation between um, different farming system with the dietary diversity. So that's why I'm still checking the model from our AMD data. And there is even uh, another question for our first presenter. Uh, yes, uh, thank you, Indu, for the question. Uh, regarding to your question, uh, it's about... Please, the... please repeat the question so for people be aware of. Okay, the, yeah. uh, the question is about, uh, it seems that the consumption of pools is quite less. How does it relate to the production of pools in the country? Is it their production is left or the 
Paul are show rather than consumption. Regarding uh, to this question, uh, I can say that uh, the people uh, in Cambodia mostly they consume uh, rice as their main uh, meal and then uh, vegetable or fruit. For the parts, it is uh, also a low production uh, in Cambodia. However, uh, I will find uh, more data to support uh, this uh, 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 my clarification too. Maybe just before we come to Nomi who raised, raised the hand, um, in, in, in the presentation, so you, you presented data, but you barely made really a statement of do you think it is low, it is high, uh, should it be more, should it be less? So now, so there's implicitly uh, pulses uh, could be higher, but w w what are your general findings out, at, out of it? So um, also, so yeah. There is wending of highly processed foods, but is it really a problem already? So, or there is difference between uh, rural and urban, but this difference, to me, it appeared very small. So I, I a little bit missed a bit uh, your um, your interpretations of uh, where is where it's a problem. Yeah, what mm. what? How do we really mm. evaluate uh, the, the data? Perhaps each of you can also make a short mm. statement. Mm. Um, yes, uh, because of my data, it depends on the um, expenditure of uh, the household. So they might uh, spend on uh, the, the main food, such as rice, or vegetable, or meat, or uh, uh, um, another one is fruit, rather than the pool, which is they, uh, they spend less for, uh, for this uh, Food group, so that's why we can see that there is uh, uh, the people consume. It is very uh, the low percentage, and uh, also I need to uh, find uh, more. I, I mean that find more uh, evidence to support that uh, 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 how this production of the pool uh, in this uh, in Cambodia it is also uh, low. And the problem is that uh, they need to prioritize uh, their food consumption with the main food, such as the rice and uh, uh, meat and vegetable or, or the fruit. Yes. Liz, do you want to add also to this question? Um, I guess I can just add a little more interpretation, I guess, from my part. Um, mm -hmm related to the ultra processed foods and I'm surprised how low it is at the at the national level but again the national level is only till 2021 and from our data especially the vendor data there was just a lot of supply of ultra processed foods um, there was fruits and vegetables which was good to see um, but one thing I noticed and so in our data set, when I had the, the enumerators had to fill in the open-ended question about the most common foods, um, often they wrote kids snack, and he that was the enumerator's way to say chips. And just, I think, them saying kids snack, and that's something that I saw. So the ultra-processed foods were often being bought and consumed by the children, and the meals and were consumed by adults and elderly, and you know, the fresh fruits and vegetables were probably purchased for the entire household. But so I, I think the ultra processed foods are an issue and are definitely impacting the younger generation more. So we may not be seeing all of the results of that just yet. But I do think there's something coming, which is why I want to highlight how easily accessible those foods are and how inexpensive they are compared to others. Thank you. Let's let's come to the hands. Not read the full names. Ah, first Nurmi, Pangesti, Nurmi Pangesti, or yeah. yeah, Nurmi, you are muted. Oh. Yep. Can you hear me well now? Not so yeah, well. Yeah. What about now? Speak a bit up for us. Uh, okay. I will try to speak louder. Uh, 
I hope you can hear me better now. Yes, yes. Yeah. I have two questions. One is to follow up the discussions on the dietary diversity. I would like to ask on further interpretation of the results on the difference between rural and urban area. How do you interpret the results in terms of, of that? What does it mean that people in the urban area does not diversify their diet as much as people in the rural area? Why, 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 what are the factors contributing to that? Is that low of awareness? Is that related to the price or something else? Uh, that's the first question. And then I'm interested on um, what you shared about how climate change impacted household consumptions. I don't really uh, follow what does it mean and what is the conclusion of that. I just saw that there are differences in terms of household consumption in a different uh, climate stresses. Can you elaborate more on, on that? Thank you. Yes, thank you for your question. Regarding to your first question, it is related with uh, food diversified in rural and urban. And as a result, the uh, the people in rural, they have a higher or their number is higher than uh, the urban. I can say that because of this is national data, so uh, we we select the rural, we compare the rural and urban based on uh, their uh, criteria of selection uh, during their uh, conduct uh, the national survey. So uh, uh, regarding to uh, the, the factor that uh, affect the uh, food diversify because of the people uh, in rural area, they can uh, find more uh, I, I mean that they can find uh, more type of uh, food, so uh, they consume more type uh, of food they can find uh, around uh, in their area. So that's why uh, the data shows about the, uh, there is the higher of uh, diversifying in the urban area. Uh, I would like to uh, respond to the second question to Naomi. In regard to uh, this uh, response, is uh, the 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 household it was the response like how they face the uh, climate shock and whether it affects on different kind of things like agricultural production, their income or their consumption, and they can give you a a short example like um, for example there is drought or there is high uh, high temperature during a specific time of the year and then it. Uh, it caused the livestock or poultry to die, and this is one of the source of their household consumption. And for example, the drought caused to a uh, low year or they destroy the year, so people may not have um, the food or their production for consumption, or they may consume less than they would normally uh, can consume. That's what uh, we observe their their response or their explanation. Uh, from the field and from our data. But of course, we can test more with the, if this actually translates into their real consumption from the consumption module that we capture, but it needs to be uh, integrated into the more model of the study. Nomi, are you satisfied with the answers? I think if I am allowed, I mean, the first questions that I had, um, I think people in the city have access to the same uh, diversified food is that they need to buy. Um, so I was not really thin in terms of uh, factors that really uh, contributing on uh, divers uh, diversification diet between urban and rural area, whether this is an economic, uh, an indication of um, yeah, economic factor or this is like awareness or an access to food that is different between people who live in urban or in area. 
So, so you, you are not so easy to, uh, to hear, so shortly to summarize. So Nomi was not yet completely uh, satisfied with the answer, convinced by the answer of access uh, to the foods in the urban area. Um, maybe other factors that play a role, so that is what she is questioning. I might add one thing. Um, you know, all these di dietary diversity measures have their limitations as well, and um, I think one thing could be that, you know, um, Jerome used a measure, which a, a common measure, but there's only so many food groups, and, you know, an urban person could be eating very diverse in one of those food groups because those groups are quite broad. So I think it also just may be an issue with the measurement factor. Um, and there still could also be other factors with prices and access and those types of things. But I also have to think we have to look at the tools that we're using to measure diet diversity. Thank, thank you for um, yeah, giving more arguments uh, for this. One and uh, then we would like to continue with Fichong. Oh, Pichong. Oh, Pichong. Oh, Pichong. Yeah. Yes. Thank you very much. Uh, I have one, one question uh, regarding the first presenter, uh, Mr. Kamalamista. Uh, Is it related to the first slide of the presentation? Uh, we talk about the poverty reduction. If uh, poverty is reduced, but the share of expenditure is decreased, is that correct? So it kind of the contradict between the uh, the theory, or maybe it's better to go to the first slide. Mo, well, can can you say again? I cannot hear. Why, sorry. So, would you like to go to the first slide of presentation? Uh, okay. Move to the is this this slide or is it a different slide? Just to make clear about what slide we are talking. Next, next slide, please. Okay. Yes. So. Yes, so from 2004, 2009, which is similar, and, and then 2019 until 2021, so the share of food uh, decreased, right? Yeah, yeah. Mm. So we forget about 2021 because the estimate was that the COVID-19 uh, pandemic but when we look at the 2017 and 2019, so the share of food is decreased, uh, uh, is decreased in compared to 2004, right? Yeah, and no. the, yes, and the first slide, and the first slide, it, it you mentioned about the uh, poverty, it was reduced, but the share of food uh, was increased. So I think some theory said that when the poverty is uh, poverty is reduced, the share of food or expenditure will be increased. So it kind of a uh, contradictory between the theory and the, the result of the survey. So is there any uh or result which can explain that? Yeah, well, thank you for your question. Uh and comment. Um, I, I just repeat your question again. You have uh, mentioned about uh, the first slide. I mentioned about the poverty reduction, and for this slide, you you mentioned about the decreasing of uh, food expenditures because of uh, my data. We uh, calculate the total uh, food expenditure by uh, food and non-food. So uh, regarding to uh, the lifestyle and uh, people uh, might pro uh, prioritize uh, their need with uh, non-food. That's why the expenditure with uh, the food it is decreasing, and we can see that uh, uh, especially uh, we can see that uh, the last one at 2000, uh, 2021 it is uh, de de increased a bit because of it is a uh, 
uh, after COVID, uh, people uh, prioritize their need with the food. And during the time of uh, 2024-2019, they decreased because of uh, their, uh, I mean, that uh, prioritize uh, the non-food rather than uh, uh, the food expenditure. So they allocate their budget with the other thing for uh, their living. Okay. Maybe okay. just one question also related to this one. As um, mm. reducing the share, is it positive or negative? So that, that is also not, not very clear. So uh, if, if income uh, is, is increasing, and uh, that, is, uh, that may mean you need to spend less. So spending less can be very positive. But if you keep with the same similar income, Spending less might be a problem. So for me, this this table or this figure, I, I cannot really read about poverty in it. Oh, uh, the introduction it is just about shows about the current of uh, our uh, country, and for for this finding, we just uh, we just to see uh, the overall trend of the uh, household expenditure, especially we compare. Uh, which are separate between uh, food and their uh, non-food expenditure. So this one just shows about the trend of their uh, expenditure uh, in the household. Okay, so it doesn't mm. mean you yes. uh, you uh, are study uh, relationship or correlation between poverty and the source of food. Uh, yes, uh, in this study, uh, I did not compare. Or, or compare with uh, the poverty line, but we just uh, uh, shows about the overall trend of the household uh, expenditure, especially focused on the uh, food expenditure. Thank you. And I think maybe my last is the answer. Uh, mm -hmm. Is it possible to allow me to provide some answers to question Mr. Pat? It's about how does the rice system contribute to dietary diversity and nutrition for outcomes, particularly for vulnerable populations. So, is this clear? Are you allow me to have some comment on that or answer? I find it a bit difficult to to hear you, so to understand. So, so I'm not sure whether this is the same for the others. I think, Opichung, you are asking that is there any relationship between integrated rice fish with dietary diversity? Is that correct? Yes. But yeah. I say... One thing, as I know about this about this survey, I, I, I can tell you, you know, we have enough information about the production systems of you know, rural Cambodia. But, you know, uh, this is a part of the analysis that uh, Sokcheng is presenting today. But we have information, so this can be correlated. Uh, and and I, I remember Sokcheng mentioned that he, uh, you know, uh, uh, probably tested this in case of uh, uh, Cambodian data and didn't find any significant relationship. There is a relationship, but not that significant. So, uh, uh, you know, uh, probably not now, but within one or two months when uh, she will... Uh, analyze that data, production data, farming system data more, then, then, then can give you a good answer. But at this moment, I think, uh, you know, we, you know, we, we, we can establish a relationship, but that is significant or not. Please wait for some time. Yeah, and because, uh, thank you, Shahan, and because the data specifically for rice fish uh, system is uh, very low, so somehow it's a bit yeah. difficult for us to establish a significant correlation. Yeah, that's, that. an, yeah, uh, yeah. that's another thing, because out of mm -hmm. our 500 uh, households data, we found, uh, oh. you know, I think less than 5% of the data is, uh, you know, how, uh, rice fish, uh, you know, households. So yes. uh, even, uh, you know, uh, uh, Sokchen can establish a relationship, but it's you know, statistically it's not a significant data set to tell something about that. But, uh, uh, you know, t to tell you that in Bangladesh we have collected the similar kinds of information. So probably Bangladesh data will give you more information. Is there any significant relationship between the uh, rice fish and dietary diversity? 
Maybe at this point uh, we can continue talking about diet type, as there is in the chat um, from Vichy Sin, Sin Vichy, uh, a comment on that, uh, that there was little information in the last time, so very important to have a, uh, a, an analysis about the data. But finally, uh, was wondering. Cambodia people always mention that fish is the second consumption after rice, but now might be not. So, what what happened here? So, Jeff, this point. Uh, what I can see from the data, uh, fish is one of the um, animal uh, protein, animal source protein for for the household consumption. So, in every meal, people eat a uh, it's basically people consume rice. So the protein is either coming from fish or from pork, from beef or from chicken. So this is uh, these are the alternatives um, to um, to what uh, we uh, to what the data that we uh, interview and also during that uh, period like May June, uh, it's not in the uh, the fish. The, the rice field, the, the fish that people can catch from the rice field is not really available yet. It's like end of dry season. So mostly um, the fish is not in its season that people consume very much in their diet yet. So somehow in this specific time of the year, um, there are different other alternative um, protein that people consume. Sin, uh, you, you want to you, you raise the hand? Yes, yes, yes. I, I, I just would Please. like to clarify what I had someone here. Yes. First one I just would like to uh, if we have next next uh, next phase or next next year or project or maybe uh, the the initiative, uh, it would be great if we can we explore more on the fish consumption like per capita or something like that. Because you know actually uh, in Cambodia like when we go to the field, to every like policy, they go to the field, they say fish is the second consumption. But actually, we're not sure that they're correct or not. Because in the our 20 years 20 year ago, data collection with uh, uh, the World Fish and Fish Administration. So, no data, it 20 years ago. And if I saw the result that has been collected from our team, that fish seem like maybe fish. Maybe four of fish like Aster, Aster rice is not the kind like that has been found during the 20 years ago. So it would be great if we can be explore more like currently we don't have enough budget maybe it's, or maybe we don't have much time to do that. But for next next year, if we have available fund, we can be explore more on that and we and then we can make like the uh, like some. Uh, report and maybe send, can be contribute to uh, the fishery like policy or maybe the government policy on the fishery production or something like that. And regarding to like one we mentioned earlier on rice fish culture, uh, I, I think maybe some of us may be aware on that. In Cambodia, rice fish culture farming is seen very low. Uh, uh, also mentioned earlier, but uh, uh, capture fishery in Cambodia is uh, the main, the main source of consumption. So if we look at, if we compare to Bangladesh and another AMD project, the consumption from the aquaculture is very low. Like aquaculture, we can be uh, cover, it can be cover rice culture, uh, aquaculture, maybe cake culture, something like that. But in Cambodia, aquaculture, it's reached in the last 10 years, it increased, but it's still like the proportion is not might like uh, uh, capture fishery. So uh, maybe uh, if we would like, uh, I, I, I would like to clarify on like what uh, one uh, our, our team like comment earlier that to to see about the, the consumption of rice culture uh, in Cambodia. Like we we, we we might we might not see much. It like I, I saw some data like less than one percent the production in the, the whole country. Rice culture pretty low, yes. And the last one maybe uh, maybe on on the the data prison reason I think maybe would be great is like uh, you know uh, in the, the production 
I, I saw the last slide. Uh, Liz also mentioned that the production, like the future action, like the production would be, we would be uh, in the correct home garden into uh, improve diversify diversity consumption. But from the data conduct survey recently, like we saw that the food consumption, it's, if they are, uh, can be covered the, the country, the whole country. So it's, we found that the food consumption is decreased from the second main priority to the fifth consumption. It's not in not the country. So we, we can observe that the consumption of fish decreased sadly over, over 20 years. So I think the, the two uh, productions would be mentioned more. The, the aquatic can also be in Cambodia. As we know that the capture fishery may be affected by uh, climate change and also maybe uh, the dam in the upstreams or yes. Th so, thank uh, you. Th th yeah, we. Uh, I think we are coming to an end here. Uh, no. So that was also nice that you mentioned uh, open questions, so that are still to be researched. Uh, I also had questions not yet posed. You just mentioned we had not yet talked about food safety, so I was also wondering how this would work. We had uh, also a statement of climate change may or is meaning less nutrients in crops would have liked to explore this more but our time is always restricted and uh, we spent it uh, to to discuss uh, quite a range of uh, of other topics uh do you want to close our session um yeah so uh, it's almost uh, an hour plus so thank you all the participants for uh, this, uh, you know, um, uh, to participate in